Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut and welcome back to Infographics in Motion. This week we're looking at this kind of, well it could be a line uh, bar graph, sorry not a line graph, it could be sort of vials filling up to represent a percentage, uh, it could be any sort of thing really. In this case it's vials filling up to represent a percentage. Um, you can see it's quite simple, it's literally just six shapes, the white shape proceeds as the colour shape increases um, using the same techniques as we did in the other two episodes in this series so if you haven't seen them check them out because there is stuff that's going to cross over through all of them but i'll try and keep it as accessible as possible so without uh, any further ado let's jump right in i'm going to start by creating a new composition it's going to be 1920 by 1080 and i'm just going to make it 30 frames per second so that my computer can handle it quickly whilst making the tutorial Okay, we're going to want to drop a new solid <clears throat> in the background uh, and we want to make that red. So I'm just going to bring my color palette on the other screen and we're just going to make that the tip tut red. Okay, that gives us a nice background to work with. Again, you're going to be want to making sure that you're in ray traced 3D and when you create a 3D layer that'll appear up there. So we'll get to that in a second. First thing you want to do is create a circle. So go to your ellipse tool, make sure it's got a fill and no stroke. And holding shift, just click and drag anywhere until you find a circle that you're happy with the size. OK, you can then <clears throat> um, using either a plug in, you can realign that anchor point or you can use the pan behind tool um, just so it's in the center. And then we can center that in frame as well by hitting P to bring up position and typing in the center of your composition. OK, now we're going to want to make this a 3D layer. And as soon as you click that, you'll notice your renderer up here. You want to make sure it's on ray traced 3D not classics 3D or cinema 4D, okay? Now, the way um, these 3D shapes work is all by extrusion, which is the name given to giving something a, a depth, essentially, in After Effects, and all the movement is done via a camera. So we're just gonna create a new camera. Um, 80 millimeter is fine, no problem, and hit OK. Now, if we were to bring up the camera controls for this layer, um, which is just C, and if you click C, you rotate through those controls, you'll notice that you can pan, zoom, and tilt accordingly, okay? And if you want to reset those controls, all you need to do is go down to transform and reset, okay? So we'll just clap that for now. Um, but I tell you what we will do is we'll take our rotate camera tool and holding shift and up, we'll just twist a little bit so that we're looking at it from side on, not fully side on, but almost just so we can see either the top or bottom of the cylinder, whatever this happens to be, okay? Um, so we want to make this taller. And to do that, we go down to our geometry options and we uh, increase our extrusion depth. And you'll notice that it extrudes down. This is fine for now. Um, what I want to do is go extrusion depth about, let's say 300, if 300 was the center point of what you wanted. So if you want it to be 600 pixels tall or 600 units tall uh, in total, just set it for 300 for now because it'll make the first half of our cylinder. OK, um, what we actually want this to do as well is to rotate so that it's pointing upwards. And I'll show you why in a minute. So if we hit the R tool for rotation, and I think it will be Y, we rotate the Y axis to 180 degrees. And what this does now is it allows us to extrude upwards. So if we go back to our geometry options and keyframe our extrusion depth, press U, we can collapse everything we don't need out of the way. If we were to increase this now, it would go physically up. And if we were to decrease this now, it would go physically down. Um, quite useful. Now, this at the moment is just a solid white shape. There's no different colors or anything like that. So what we want to do is make this colorful as if it was liquid. So we can make the solid shape a yellow, and that creates the whole shape being yellow. So we want to add a color to the uh, top of here, which is slightly different. And to do that, all you need to do is make sure you have your ellipse selected and choose add front color. Now that may be underneath, uh, which I think it is. So we actually want a back color. So that's fine. We'll just do the opposite. And what that will do is create the end as a different color. I'm just going to select a slightly darker one. We may need to change this later on. So what I'm going to do is just keyframe it. Then when we collapse it, we've got keyframes for those certain sections. Perfect. We'll call this bottom. OK, let's duplicate that layer like so. Now what we want to do is take the rotation tool and shift that back to zero. 
Now that pushes it out to the um, underside. So when we increase this again, it will be taller. And if we decrease it, it'll be shorter. So let's just shift that above until the two meet, the two shapes meet. OK, um, let's see if we can't make that at the same depth, 336.5. Three, three, oh, no, sorry. Where is our 3D depth? There it is. So that needs to be 616.1. There we go. That's just making sure it's at the same uh, depth in Y space or Z space? Z space, just so that they align correctly. Um, and you can check that by rotating and moving the camera around. So if I were to move this camera, you'll notice that they are at the same depth. OK, so we can shift this. 616.1. Um, we can shift this shape down by grabbing the Z axis and just pushing that down onto top of that shape so those two points meet. Sorry, I explained that really badly, but hopefully you'll understand what I mean. 265, let's try. No, negative 266. Negative 264. Just get rid of that gap. There we go. Negative 2. Six, three should do it. There we go. So we've now got two cylinders that meet in the middle. This one will grow upwards. This one will grow or shrink downwards. OK, um, you can probably see where we're going with this. So we need to make sure that this top shape um, is looking as good as it can. But first thing we're going to do is drop both of those opacities to about 75 because they're supposed to be see through. Um, lock that layer. Maybe we'll drop them down to 50 instead. There we go. So when you drop them that low, you can start to see the shape beneath it. Um, now, we're wanting this to look like as if liquid is filling it up. So this top shape should probably be white because that's going to connotate the easiest that it's actually empty, like so. And you can already see that that shape, that color yellow from underneath, is scanning through. OK, so it doesn't matter that it was darker because the white's overlaying it. You just have to sort of pick a color that works for you, really. So this one, we want the um, front rather than the back to be changed, I think, because that's where the anchor point is. And to, do, to check that, what you can do is go down to your ellipse, click Add, Front and Color, and that should recolor that section there. We don't want that uh, back color anymore. doesn't matter. We can get rid of it. Um, we could probably actually see if we can delete it all. Yep, we can, no problem. Um, we want that front color, however, to be a slightly brighter white. So we'll just put it at full white. And you can see now that that looks like the top of the cylinder. Um, I might even drop this percentage down to about 25. There you go, that looks a bit better. And we might even darken this just a touch more. Cool, perfect. So all we need to do now is animate it. This bit's really easy. You've got your extrusion depth already keyframed. So you just need to go to wherever you want your animation to finish. For this example, we'll use two seconds. Um, and we'll turn this extrusion depth up because that increases the height of this. But you notice you get a sort of weird shadowing unless you also decrease the other one. So if you're going from 300 to let's say 450, but we'll make the first one zero. OK, then you'd want this one to go from 600, which is the full length of both of them. And when that one reaches 450, you'd want this one to go to 150 because that's the remainder of the tube. OK, uh, we can remove that keyframe for that color now because we know we're not going to change it. It just makes our interface a bit easier to work with. And then we can just give them a bit of easing. Oops, that was the flow chart. Uh, we can give them a bit of easing, go to our graph, shift those keyframes along. That go, gives it a sort of fast, slow animation. And then we can simply take a look and see if we're happy with it. So I'll just trim our composition. And we can take a look. Nice and easy. Now, you could achieve this in 2D, but again, you wouldn't be able to do any of the camera effects if you did so. So let's add in some to show you the benefit of doing this in 3D. OK, so we have our camera, um, but it isn't moving and it isn't doing anything interesting. So what's the point? So let's choose a place where we want this image to start. OK, probably want this to be a bit zoomed in like so. Might be a bit much, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
let's just select a position. And as always, we'll make sure the point of interest is keyframed as well. That makes sense. Um, because just in case we want to change where the camera is looking or pointing. Um, and then let's move over to our two seconds. Maybe let's go to three. And let's pull all the way out. Let's pull down a bit. And let's just affect the rotation just a touch. Like so. I think that is going to look pretty good. Give ourselves a bit of breathing room in the composition. I'll make it five seconds long. And we'll extend these layers. And we'll just give the camera a bit of easing. How's that? Right, let's take a look and see what we've come up with. Well, apart from that background layer disappearing because I accidentally locked it, that looks pretty good to me. Um, you can see it's our sort of bar chart filling up, vial filling up. If you wanted to, you could put an actual percentage with a key next to it if you had some actual information to present. Um, I don't, so there's no point. Um, and that's pretty much it. To achieve the effect that you saw in the thumbnail, you just do it three times with different values on each. It is really as simple as that. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. And stick around because there'll be more in this series, infographics in motion coming up very soon. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.